very good morning to all the student today we'll see about the very important pathological phenomena that is responsible for the many number of the disorders let us start okay we'll continue about the hemodynamic disorders so last two class we have discussed about the disturbance of the body fluid and as well as in the disturbance in the volume so today class we'll see about the obstructions okay so obstruction in the circulations okay so under the obstruction in the circulation there are four sub chapter thrombosis embolism ischemia and infarction this four disease the four pathological phenomena responsible for many diseases okay we'll say it okay so what will be the today outline so today outline i am going to talk about the hemostasis under the hemostasis what is the definition of hemostasis component of the hemostasis and step of the hemostasis so followed by we are talking about the today's class thrombosis so thrombosis a definition of thrombosis what is the difference between hemostasis and thrombosis cause of the thrombosis classification of thrombus thrombus and difference between arterial thrombus and venous thrombus and last we are going to see the fate of the thrombus okay so uh, we would have to wonder why we are studying hemostasis before uh, thrombosis okay the reason is that hemostasis is nothing but it is a normal physiological phenomena okay what is that okay it is a clot formation in injured blood vessels okay so okay if you take about the thing this is the hemostasis is the balance between bleeding and clotting okay so bleeding the anticoagulant and in the clotting there is a procoagulant if the deficiency of the anticoagulant leads to bleeding if the more procoagulants leads to clotting okay let me talk about one example okay trauma any injury so injury leads to if the anticoagulant is less so bleeding will start okay at the same time if the pro if the in clotting example is thrombosis so thrombosis what happen if the procoagulant is more in the blood vessels that leads to thrombosis so the basic phenomena is disturbance of disturbance of the thrombosis leads to thrombosis okay so we'll study what is that okay so what is the four hemostasis mechanism there are the four substance are the component helping for the hemostasis one is endothelium another one is platelet and third one it is coagulation system and fourth one is fibrinolytic system this four is a component of the hemostasis okay what we'll do okay so this is the summary of the whole hemostasis at end of the class please go through again for in order to understand uh, properly okay so what happened any the injury of the blood vessels Okay. Assume that there, there is some blood vessels will be injured. So what happen? The three component will get activated, which is blood present into the blood vessels. Okay. So endothelium, endothelium is a lining of the blood vessels. So that will get activated, and the platelet, which is present in the function of the platelet, is otherwise the another name of platelet is the thrombocytes, and coagulation factor which is present into the plasma. All three will get activated. That leads to formation of the clot. Okay. Once is the clot. So what is the function of this clot? The clot will be helping for the Uh, prevent the blood loss from the blood vessels okay so once it is a clot is forms it should not be persist for long time so what happen there should be dissolution of the clot there should be clot will be dissoluted should be possible so what is the reason what is the mechanism for that it is a fibrinolysis so this is the 1 2 3 4 mechanism is the component of the blood vessels okay we will study one by one what is the thing okay so what happened the trauma leads to the procoagulant will be activated by the endothelium okay and the trauma leads to activation of the platelet and trauma leads to activation of the coagulation factor so what happened that endothelium vasoconstrictor and platelet will come to the affected part and coagulation will help for the fibrin thread so that leads to formation of the clot okay we'll study in detail okay component of the blood vessels as i told you endothelium platelet coagulation system and fibrinolytic system okay we'll study one by one first one it is endothelium okay endothelium this is the normal blood vessels you can see this is the um, neutrophil monocyte platelet and coagulation factors everything so this is the normal and this is lined by the endothelium okay and endothelium this is the collagen fibers and the black one top this one is the basement membrane this is the normal you can see this is the laminar blood flow the blood will be the blood cells will be passes into the center and periphery will be the plasma okay this is the normal blood vessels okay so what happened this endothelial injury 
okay the endothelium lining uh, lining cells of the blood vessels if the endothelium is get injured what happen okay so if the endothelium is a non activated that having the process of antithrombic property what is antithrombic property it is inhibit the clot formation okay what is activated endothelium that produce thrombotic activity the same endothelium have the two properties if it is non activated non activated means normal intact if it is you and me have the intact endothelium so it is a non activated so what happen we possess the antithrombic activity okay if it is a activated thrombosis activated endothelium that means it is having some injury it process the thrombotic activity okay what is antithrombic property so antithrombic means we have said it is inhibit uh, inhibit the clot formation there are three substance responsible for the inhibition of the clot formation one is antithrombin 3 another one is thromboplastin and tpa that is tissue plasminogen activator and tissue factor plasma tissue factor pathway inhibitors and pga prostacyclin protein c and s and macroglobulin everything will be present into the plasma okay how i am remembering this inhibit the clot formation it is a atp okay atp okay so favor the clot formation okay that means it is producing the helping for the producing the clot formation what is that it is a von willebrand factor and inhibition of tpa tissue plasminogen activator this is the tpa is responsible for inhibition so inhibitor of the tpa is a favor of the clot formation and platelet activating factor how i am remembering is a vip okay von willebrand factor inhibitor of tpa and platelet activating factor so this three is responsible for inhibit the clot formation this three is responsible for the favor the clot formations okay who's producing who how it is getting the endothelium get if the endothelium is normal this will be activated if the endothelium is injured this will be activated okay now we'll study about the platelet okay so platelet is a central role in the hemostasis okay so if any endothelial injury is taking place so immediately the platelet will be activated so what is the how what is meant by activated platelet so this is the activated platelet non activated platelet will be by con convex shape or lens shape okay once it is activated it is introduce the pseudopods this is the pseudopods okay this introduce the pseudopods and that Res that will be is a activated platelet this activated platelets producing the three type of reactions okay so non activated converted to the activated platelet by this endothelium injury so this producing the three type of reaction one reaction is known as a platelet addition another reaction is known as a platelet secretion and last one is a platelet aggregations we'll study one by one platelet additions so platelet additions very simple thing the platelet the platelet membrane have glycoproteins there are five variety of the glycoprotein uh, present in the platelet membrane okay today class we will study about only two glycoprotein so what is the name of the glycoprotein glycoprotein 1b 95 complex okay which is present in the platelet membrane and endothelium we have studied endothelium have the von willebrand factor this is the propyglen this is the favoring of the clot formation this two will be attached together so that is known as a platelet additions okay so how how it is attached attached in the sub endothelial matrix how it is attached like this so this is the blood vessels say so once it is a activated platelet it will come in contact with the this is the thing actually this is will be inside so i am writing here so what happens this platelet will be contact each other so what happened von willebrand factor and gp 1b 9b so this both will get this both will be getting attached where it is at where it is uh, addition taking place in the sub endothelial matrix okay so this is the platelet additions so what happen once it is once it is attachments once it is attached together in the activated platelet in the inside the blood vessels so what happen it produce some of the secretion so you know platelet having two type of granules one is alpha granules and another one is the delta granules so alpha granules produce fibrinogens factor fibrinogen is the uh, factor 1 and factor 5 and factor 8 P, uh, platelet derived growth factor and tissue growth factor and delta producing atp calcium histamine and serotonin thromboxin a2 we have studied into the uh, chemical mediator so which is important the atp and thromboxin a2 is responsible for other uh, platelet activations okay so that is the reason i have written in the board letter okay so what happened so once the platelet additions so platelet attachments is over so platelet attachment is over its secretion the last step is 
platelet aggregation. So it is the process of the aggregation of the platelet to one another. So so many platelets will come in contact to each other by platelet membrane glycoprotein 2B and 3A. So this is the way. So so many platelet. Okay, this activated platelet will attract many platelet where it is inside the blood drummer. So many platelet will be attracted together by way of this one GP, 2B and 3A. Okay, so this is the two glycoprotein which is present into the platelet membrane. Okay, that responsible for attachments to the subendothelial matrix. Okay, so that is responsible for the platelet. Okay, so what is the coagulation system? So coagulation system, it's a very simple manner if you want to explain. It is a process of forming fibrin thread which works as the glue. So what happens, we have studied endothelium produced the procoagulant and platelet will come and connect to the affected part. So what happened? So what happened, the, all the platelet will be separate, separate. So there should be some thread should be required for making all the making unity, okay, making uh, bundle okay, or making as a masses, some fibrin is required. So who is producing this fibrin? Coagulation system is producing this fibrin. So how it is producing fibrin? By 13 coagulation factor. So here I am not going to take about the 13 coagulation factors each function but here I am taking about how to remember. How I am remembering during my student's life. So I used to remember foolish persons taken calcium leads to silent allergy clinical symptom produce hives and face. So F means fibrinogens. Okay. And P means we have studied. P means prothrombin and T means thromboplastin. So everything. So this is the way I used to remember. Okay. So this is not important for today's class. Okay. So this is the, there are two pathways, intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway. So this is the mechanism, but this mechanism I am making very simplified manner. I am just presenting to you. Okay. There are two types of mechan coagulatory mechanism. One is intrinsic mechanism. Another one is extrinsic pathway. Intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway. So intrinsic pathway, there are 12, 11 and 9. How I am remembering 12, 11, 9 except 10. Okay, that 10 is here, extrinsic pathway, 3 plus 7, 10. Okay, so intrinsic pathway, this 3 factor and coagulation factor, extrinsic pathway, this 2 coagulation factor. This come together, okay, meet in the common pathway. Okay, common pathway is a factor 5 and factor 2. 2 is the prothrombin. Okay, so what happened? This prothrombin, okay, converted into thrombin, that is a 2A. Okay, so this 2A, makes the fibrinogens 1 into fibrin. So this is the final product. This is the fibrin, final product. So the basic aim of coagulation is the formation of the fibrin product. So this is the mechanism. Okay. How to in the investigations, how to remember? It is very easy. Okay. There are this one. Okay. Activated platelet thromboplastin time is responsible for intrinsic pathway. If anything is uh, if it is a, this is the normal value, I tell you 30 to 40 second. If it is anything is increase or decrease, that means intrinsic pathway is decreased. Intrinsic pathway is affected. So clotting time that also helping for the intrinsic factor and prothrombin time that is responsible for assessment of the extrinsic pathway and thrombin time that is responsible for the common pathway and fibrinogens that is the this responsible for whether it is a fibrin is producing or not. Okay, what is the number? This is a normal value. Okay, so this is prothrombin time is the 11 to 13.5 seconds. Okay, we have said it. PT is responsible for extrinsic pathway and activated partial thromboplastin time. The thromboplastin time normally is 30 to 40 seconds. So that is responsible for intrinsic pathway as well as the common pathway. Okay, so and clotting time also responsible for intrinsic pathway and thrombin time is responsible for common pathway that is a 12 to 14 seconds and last one is a fibrinogens is a 150 to 400 milligram per deciliter so this is the path this is the coagulation uh, parameter helping for the whether the coagulation is making proper or not okay so last one it is the fibrinolytic system so we have studied the endothelium we have studied the platelet we have studied the coagulation last one fibrinolytic system. So what is fibrinolytic system? It is useful for lysis of the fibrin or breakdown of the fibrin into the blood clot. So once the blood clot is forms, okay, it should not be persist for long time. So that will make the abnormal phenomena. So what happened? Normally our, our body have the mechanism. That mechanism is a lysis of the fibrin. Okay, how it is? Plasminogens. Okay, plasminogen is 
with the help of TPA, we have said TPA is the inhibition process. Tissue plasminogen activator converted the plasminogen into plasmin. So that plasmin, what happened? Digest the fibrin, the breakdown of the fibrin. Breakdown of the fibrin. So what is the end result? It is a fibrinogen degradation product. Okay. So fibrinogen degradation product. So what is from this? How to assess the coagulation parameter? This one, fibrin degradation product. Okay, so what is the normal value of fibrin, fibrin degradation product? Is a less than 10 milligram per deciliter. Whether it is normal or not, we can assess. Okay, plasminogen, what is the normal value? It is a 10 to 16 milligram per deciliter. So this will help to assess the whether fibrinolytic system is proper or not. Okay, so this is the total mechanism of the hemostasis. Okay, so the, okay, now we'll go for the steps of hemostasis. Okay, how it is? So there are four steps. Vasoconstriction, primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis, and dissolution of the salt, clot. Okay, so I am making just simple. Vasoconstriction is responsible for endothelium is responsible, and platelet is responsible for primary hemostasis, and fibrin production is happening in the secondary hemostasis, and fibrinolysis process happening in the dissolution of the clot. Okay, let me like a story. Okay, vasoconstriction. So what happened? As soon as immediate injury, this is the place of the injury, so what happens immediately blood vessels will be vasoconstrictor. What is the, which cell is responsible for vasoconstriction is the endothelium. I told you endothelium having the normal endothelium have antithrombic property. So if the injured endothelium have thrombic properties, what happens that will stimulate leads to vasoconstriction. So what is the next step? Primary hemostasis. Which cell is responsible for that? Platelet is responsible for that. So what happened? The more and, plate, more, and more platelet is affected to the injured part. Okay, that secretes the ADP, thromboxin A2, we have studied everything, plated additions, everything, so one milligram factor, how it is attached, everything we have studied, so attached, so this is a primary hemostasis responsible by the platelet, okay, once it is, comes to the secondary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis is nothing but formation of the fibrin, okay, which, uh, how it is fibrin forms, with the help of coagulation system, with the intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway, there is a formation of the fibrin, okay, last one, dissolution of the clot, so what happened? Once it is a clot is forms, okay, in the normal thing. So what happened? It is a antithrobic property, TPA, everything will be there. What happened? Plasminogen is converted to the plasmin. The plasmin will dissolve the clot, the blood vessels will be normal. So this process is known as the hemostasis. Very simple thing. Hemostasis means clot formation into the injured blood vessels. Okay, this is the normal. Now we'll study the today's class of the thrombosis. Okay, what is thrombosis? Very simple. Okay. It is an abnormal pathological response. That there is a hemostasis is the physiological, a normal physiological response. Thrombosis is the abnormal pathological response. Okay, what is the simple definition? Say, clot formation in the uninjured blood vessels. This is known as the thrombosis. Here, the only one word is different. Okay, so if the clot formation in the injured blood vessel, it is hemostasis. If the clot formation in the uninjured blood vessel, it is known as the thrombosis. Other mechanism, formation of the clot mechanism is same. Okay, so now we'll study what is it? Thrombus means the name of the blood clot is known as the thrombus. Very important. Okay, thrombosis means it's a pathological process of form, uh, formation of the blood clot is known as the thrombosis. Okay, thrombus is the clot, thrombus is the process, phenomena. Okay, so what is the proper definition? Okay, whereby there is a formation of the blood clot in uninjured vasculature or after relatively minor injury. This is the definition of thrombosis. Okay, so from this we can identify it is an uninjured blood vessels. Okay, there should not be no injury. There is no injury, but there is looks like there is some pathological phenomena. The blood cell will produce the more clot, more more procoagulant that leads to formation of the clot. Okay, so what happened? So now we'll study what is the difference between hemostasis and thrombosis. Very simple. Okay, by the nature both are blood clot. Okay, it's very easy. And next location hemostasis is the site of vascular injury here it is the uninjured blood vessels okay site of uninjured blood vessel this is the very important differentiation okay what is the cause the main cause is the trauma or injury okay and the thrombosis is the atherosclerosis okay there are thrombosis that are responsible for many number of the pathological condition myocardial infarctions and atherosclerosis so many disorders okay so that is the reason we have to study properly so atherosclerosis is the one example of thrombosis Okay, what is the outcome? Hemostasis outcome is stoppage of the blood loss. But what is the outcome of thrombosis? It is the embolism. What is embolism? We'll study into the next class. Okay, this is the difference between hemostasis and thrombosis. Okay, what will be the causes? So causes, 
Okay, we are studying under the one heading. It is known as the Virchow's triad. Triad means you can understand there is a three component. Okay, what is the three component? There are three component: endothelial injury and abnormal blood flow, and third one is hypercoagulation. Okay, so what are the three? We have studied into the hemostasis. Endothelium is the one component, and coagulation system is another component. Okay, and platelet and other everything is is here. So three component of the Virchow's triad. It is very important for the thing. One of the very common questions, Virchow's triad. Okay, we will study one by one. So endothelial injury. What what are all the cause responsible for endothelial injury? There are myocardial infarctions, ulcerated arthromatous plaque. And infected valve disorders and myocarditis. This and all the this and all will produce the injury to the endocardium that leads to why it is once it is injury to the endocardium, endocardium will produce the procoagulant as we said that favor the clot formation. But here remember there is no injury. Okay, there is no physical injury. Okay, so this is a myocardial infarction, ulcerated everything. Okay, now abnormal blood flow. Abnormal blood flow in the way of we are discussing in the stasis. Stasis means stasis and turbulence. Okay, so what happened? Normal blood flow, laminar blood flow. We have studied into the normal. Okay, so this is the all the blood all the blood cells will go to the center and periphery will be into the plasma. Any problem, like we have studied into the inflammation chapter, all the neutrophil or all the phagocytic cells will come and connect with the endothelium. So there is a known as a non-laminar blood flow. That is the main cause of disruption of the laminar flow. Is the main responsible for the clot formation. And next one it is all the coagulation factors. Everything. Is producing into the uh, uh, liver. Okay, so that producing everything producing into the liver that leads to decreased hepatic clearance of the activated coagulation system, coagulation factor by the liver causes. Okay, liver causes. Okay, then increased hypercoagulability. Okay, coagulation factor is increased. So what happened? What are all the causes? So increased hepatic synthesis of the clotting factor or Decreased anticoagulant synthesis. So, what are in the case of cancer and liver disorders and venous stasis in case of immobilization and tissue injury in case of myocardial infarctions and surgery. These are all is the causes of increased co coagulations. Okay. So, then now now we'll study about the classification of the thrombus. Okay. So there are. Classification based on the two type, anatomical type and morphological type. Okay, anatomical type there is according to the location. Okay, cardiac thrombus, arterial thrombus, venous thrombus and capillary thrombus. According to the morphology, it have three type: pale thrombus, red thrombus and mixed thrombus. Pale thrombus otherwise known as the platelet thrombus because it having more platelet and fibrin. Okay, and red thrombus otherwise known as the RBC thrombus because it having more RBC than platelet and fibrin. And mixed thrombus is mixing of pale and red. Okay, so we'll study one by one. Arterial thrombus. Arterial thrombus is white and mural. Mural means it is attached into the wall of the blood vessels. Attached into the wall of the blood vessel it is known as the mural. Okay, and it is a firm consistency and it is a pale. Okay, so this is the thrombus. Okay, so this thrombus it is a pale thrombus. Okay, pale thrombus. This is the arterial thrombus. Okay, venous thrombus. It is a red and occlusive. Okay, and soft and gelatinous. Occlusive means it is occluded the blood vessels. The total blood vessels will be made up of this thrombus. Okay, so example, this is the red zip. You, you can see it is occluded. Totally, it is occluded. The whole blood vessels wall will be occluded. So this is the red color. So this is the venous thrombus. Okay, you may ask why it is a red color because it consists of more RBC. Where why it is a pale because it consists of more platelet and fibrin. Okay, so mixed laminate uh, mixed thrombi. This is the combination of both pale and red. Both will be combined together. It's present in case of mixed thrombus. Okay. So what happened? It's a very important for us is to know what is the difference between arterial and venous thrombi. Okay. So thrombus. Okay. So common site of arterial thrombi is the coronary and cerebral artery. Okay. In case of venous, superficial and deep vein in the lower limb. Okay. That is a common site. And another one. The main cause of arterial thrombus is the endothelial injury. The main causes of venous thrombus is the stasis or turbulence. Okay, so the blood flow. Okay, this is a very important for the MCQs. Okay, blood flow. The grow retrograde. What is retrograde? Retro means backwards. So the arterial thrombus will grow in backward direction. That means against the blood flow. Against the blood artery, you know, from top to down. 
So it is against the blood flow. What is the venous thrombi? It is anti-grade. Anti-grade means it is towards the heart. It is grows in the towards the uh, venous circulation normally from the up to down, uh, down to up. Okay. So what happened? Anti-grade means it is towards the heart. It is against the heart. So that is how to remember. Okay. So type is I told you all the arterial thing is the mural. Mural means it is uh, uh, attached into the blood vessels of the uh, blood vessels uh, attached to the wall of the blood vessels. Occlusive in case of venous and macroscopically it is a pale and it is a venous it is a red and microscopically it is a foam consistency in case of venous it is a soft consistency and MRI formation is less in case of arterium arterial thrombus and venous thrombus is a more chance to get the venous thrombus so embolism is more common is the venous than the arterial thrombus okay so then now we'll see another type of thrombus it is known as the line of zone Okay, so the line of zone, otherwise known as the coralline, coralline thrombi. Okay, what is that? So the thrombi formed in the aorta or heart. That it is known as the line of zone. Okay, so very simple understanding. Where the site of rapid blood flow it is present, there is a formation of the line of zone. Okay, what is that? Okay, so what is that? The line of zone formed by the alternative layer of light staining aggregated platelet mixed with the fibrin meswork and dark staining layer of the RBC. There is a plate, uh, there is a light staining in the uh, periphery by the platelet and fibrin and dark staining into the center by the RBC. So it looks like this. Okay, you can see this is the light, light by the platelet, the uh, light layer by the platelet and fibrin. This is the dark one. This is the dark one, it is known as the accumulation of the RBC. So this type of things is known as the line of zone. Okay. Now we'll see the last portion is the fate of thrombus. So what, what is the fate? I told you fate means outcome. What is the final outcome of this thrombus? Okay. So this is the thrombus formation. So it is the blood vessels. In the blood vessel there is a thrombus is present. Okay. What is the possibility of the fate? Number one fate is the resolution. Resolution means the thrombus may be resolved completely. Okay. So like this. There is a no thrombus is present. It happening into the uh, two to third day after uh, after disorders. It may resolution is automatically it is a possible. Okay. And second solution is organization. What is organization? Thrombus may become organized and recanalized. So what is that? So this is the thrombus. So what happened? This thrombus. Okay. This whole thrombus will become the uh, thrombus convert into vascularized endothelial mass of connective tissue. Okay. So what happens this thrombus will convert it into that. Looks like it is a mass. It is a vascularized connective tissue. So what happens? The, the mechanism will identify this is the vascularized connective mass. So what happens? The blood circulation will start. Fibroblast will accumulate. Clotting factors, everything will come. So it will look, look it as a formation of the granulation tissue. So formation of this ingrowth of fibroblast angiogenesis, coagulation factor and phagocytes, this is type, it is known as the organization. It is organized and recanalized. It makes the new blood vessels, looks like a new blood vessels. So that will produce as the thing. So that is known as the recanalization. So this is the organization and recanalization. And the next one it is the embolism. Embolism means the thrombus may dislodge and become the embolus or emboli. So this is the way. So this is the thrombus. Okay. So thrombus will cut into the different pieces and small small pieces. It is known as the thrombus. This is a very dangerous phenomena. We will discuss into the next class. So this is the emboli. So the emboli formation. This is the third one. Embol embolization. Okay. So fourth one, it is infection. Okay. What happened? Infection means accumulation of the microorganism into the thrombus. So like this. So accumulation of the because the thrombus is consist of clotting factor we have studied that uh, thrombus is consist of clotting factor uh, clotting factors all the protein things okay so sacrolytic proteolytic everything is present so what happened that will be responsible for growing of the more microorganism so what happened basically will come on basically our focus or microorganism will come and attach to that leads to that is known as the infective thrombus okay the last one it is the propagations okay what is mean by propagations the thrombi will attract more and more platelet coagulation tissue and it will size is increases and it will, uh, it will go to the other part of the part, other part of the blood vessels. So this part is known as the propagations. Thank you. Let's meet in the next class with a new chapter of emboli and infections.